Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back. Let's talk some wet shaving, some other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on one minute. Hmm? Yeah, I got Dunkin' Donuts again. I got a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. I got to change things up. So I got to start looking for maybe a small samp, coffee sampler and kind of change things up. But check out my coffee mug this morning. National Cartoonist Society, founded 1946. And here's our logo, our coat of arms. I've been a member of the National Cartoon Society for um, a long time now. And uh, the organization really afforded me the opportunity to meet my childhood heroes. All the guys I used to read in the comics pages every single morning, uh, I got to finally, finally meet a lot of nice, nice uh, men and women in that organization whose work I used to read every single day. Really terrific. One cartoonist in particular, Fred Laswell. I'll have a link to his Wikipedia page below. I mention him because Fred, he passed away in 2001, but he drew Snuffy Smith and he started as an assistant to Billy DeBeck who created Barney Google. And when Billy DeBeck passed away, Fred took over the strip and then introduced these hillbilly characters. So it became uh, Barney Google and Snuffy Smith and then he just kind of just let it evolve to becoming Snuffy Smith, kind of made it, made it his own. And uh, he was a wonderful guy, and he had a lot of great stories. And I, whenever I went to a, an NCS event, the Rubin Awards, uh, or any other gathering, uh, inevitably I would end up talking to Fred. What a wonderful man. And, and he would call me up uh, like on a Saturday morning, and we would just chat. Just a terrific guy. But uh, turns out, he told me many stories, and he told me a few stories related to this. It turns out that he was good friends with Babe Ruth. Yeah, he met Babe Ruth and knew Babe Ruth and they were good friends. And when Fred was living in New York and drawing his strip and Babe Ruth was already retired from baseball, he would come over to the studio and he would say, hey, Freddie boy, let's go to the ball game. So Fred would put down his pen and he would go to Yankee Stadium with Babe Ruth and sit in Babe Ruth's box with Babe Ruth and watch the Yankees baseball game. How cool is that? So I guess I can say that I shook the hand that shook the hand of Babe Ruth. So, uh, you know what? Hey, I'll take it. And Fred, wherever you are, God bless you. It was a, it was a real honor knowing you. All right, so uh, I got some questions right here in front of me. Been kind of working on my camera setup. And uh, let's get right to them. Ron Culliner writes, Hi, Mark. How often do you give your gear a thorough cleaning? And what method do you use to keep your razors looking new? Best, Ron. Uh, Ron was kind of concerned that he... You know, I've used several of his, a couple of his questions in the last mailbag, but a lot of viewers have asked me this question uh, over the years, and I'm happy to answer this. So don't worry about Ron. Don't worry about it, Ron. About asking multiple questions, and and uh, to everyone else out there, don't worry about multiple questions. If it's a great question, I'm going to use it, and this is a great question. Remember, send your questions to Monday Mailbag at gmail.com. Monday Mailbag at gmail.com. Well. I clean my razors after every single shave. Uh, what I do is I disassemble them. If it's a three-piece razor like this, I just I, I take it apart, the handle, uh, the base plate, and the cap. I remove the blade. I pat the blade dry, especially if I'm going to use it the next day for the next shave. I dry, I rinse and dry all these elements back, uh, all these elements. Um, I then reassemble everything back together and uh, make sure everything's nice and dry and then hang it on my razor and brush stand and it's all set for the next morning shave. Same thing with a, uh, a one-piece razor. I uh, open it up, I remove the blade, I pat that blade dry. I don't rub it, I pat it dry and then I go about rinsing this and towel drying it out very, very gently all the way around. Now, uh, when I notice that there is a buildup of, say, soap scum, or it's not looking as shiny as it should. Um, like a lot of other wet shavers out there, I'll use a mild detergent, but I have found that this stuff works really, really well. Uh, Dr. Bronner's. Dr. Bronner's is, I mean, you can use it for everything. I, I even shave with this, and I've done that on camera as well. Uh, this is wonderful. You dilute this. You get a lot of it, but dilute it. So you only need a few drops. Just fill your sink up, uh, drop in your razor, and then get a, a very, very old, soft 
toothbrush, something with soft, soft nylon bristles, something that's not going to scratch, and then just, you know, give it a little gentle, just get a little gentle scrubbing. Open it up, give it a little gentle scrubbing in here, in, here and there. And I happened to clean this this morning with Dr. Bronner's, knowing that I was going to use it on camera. And I didn't shine it up with, or I didn't polish it up, I just used Dr. Bronner's. And look how nice and clean and shiny it came out. Look at that. There's the inside. The, uh, the bottom of these plates will get some soap scum. And look how clean that came out. Look, look, see? Just beautiful. And everything shined up beautifully. I mean, it looks like, looks like it's brand new. Um, I even cleaned up my Chieftain Junior. And again, I had a lot of soap, skill, soap scum buildup on the bottom plate there. You can see that, that it just cleaned up wonderfully well. And if you want, you can get a cotton swab and, uh, you know, get into some of these tighter areas here if you want to and just kind of, you know, remove some of that. But the Dr. Bronner's does a really, really nice job. Now, some other wet shavers, they'll use toothpaste with a, uh, an old toothbrush uh, to clean up their razors. And they say that works great and kind of brings out a shine. I have not done that. I can't speak to how abrasive that could or could not be. Dr. Browner's, when you dilute it, it's nice and gentle, and it really cuts through the soap scum. Uh, if you really want to make it really, really shine, the uh, non-bleach scrubbing bubbles that you get in an aerosol can, make sure it's non-bleach, that does a wonderful job of really shining the chrome up and cutting a lot of the gunk out. But again, uh, you know, if you want to make that extra step and really make them shine, that stuff works really, really well. But non-bleach aerosol can don't get the spray bottle get the aerosol can non-bleach uh, scrubbing bubbles that does a great job matter of fact i'll use scrubbing bubbles to um, in one of my steps to sanitize any vintage razors that i might buy at a yard sale or a, a garage sale or on ebay that sort of thing so that's really uh it's really worked well and it really has shined given a good shine to all my razors but uh, really dr Dr. Browner's. This stuff is really good. And again, it's got a million and one uh, uses, and I use it for shaving as well. You know, it doesn't give you a big, big, thick Santa beard, but it's very, very slick, and it works really, really well. So yeah, that's what I use. Just uh, Dr. Browner's. A nice, mild, 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 soft old toothbrush. Something that you're not, <laughs> not going to brush your teeth with. Uh, and uh, some good hot water. And um, really, it... Uh, it does a really, really nice job. Look at that. Shined it up really, really well this morning. Just terrific. Terrific. Okay. Hey, thanks very much for that question, Ron. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Joseph Paul writes, Hey, Mark, I greatly enjoy watching your videos and appreciate all the information you provide. I'm curious as to whether you've turned any of your friends or family onto wet shaving since you began posting videos on it. Yes, I have. I absolutely have. My older brother, Tom, who has a light beard, he wanted to get a nice clean line uh, around his neck here. And uh, uh, we talked about it and uh, he thought that maybe a safety razor would do a good job better than a cartridge razor for that. And I said, absolutely. So I recommended the Chieftain Junior, a nice mild razor where you put in a, a, a good blade will give him a really nice sharp edge there and clean up his neck and he absolutely loves it. So he hasn't gone full wet shave, but he has used it there and he's gotten great results from this razor. And uh, so I gave him some Nivea sensitive shaving cream and also some CO Bigelow, which is pretty much Parasso Green. And he really likes to process a lot. I have a nephew also uh, who, uh, uh, has a safety razor, got turned on to it, and uh, he's using the, um, the this one right here, Shaveology. He uses this razor here, loves it. Uh, he does a combination of uh, cartridge, depending on his schedule, cartridge shaving and safety razor shaving, but he really loves using the safety razor and tells me that he gets uh, a much better shave with the safety razor than he does with a cartridge razor, but with him it's a time element. Uh, and you want to check out the Shaveology razors. These are really great. This is a three-piece razor. This is their three-piece razor. Check out their three-piece razor because it is very affordably priced. And I dare say that this is every bit as good as um, an Edwin Jagger, a Mule R89. 
As a matter of fact, this is very, very similar in look and design to uh, my Baxter of California, which is a Mula R89. But this gives a really, really wonderful shape. So you want to you want to check it out. And also, uh, when you purchase from Shaveology, they make a donation to Soldiers Angels, which supports uh, our soldiers and their families. So it's a very, very good cause that they're involved with. So you might want to check them out. And again, love this razor a lot. Um, so yeah. So uh, then one other one other one other individual. Uh, my nephew's friend reached out to me via email and said he was just getting a lot of irritation and razor bumps from a cartridge razor and would switching to a safety razor help him. I said, absolutely. I recommended uh, razors and creams and brushes and that sort of thing. And he really took to it and saw a huge improvement so much so his wife was very, very happy. And since then he has added to his collection and he finds that a slant uh, razor is really one of uh, his favorite and gives him a really really terrific shape so there's somebody else who um, was inspired by this channel and this videos to uh, and these videos to uh, uh, take up the wet shave with the safety razor so yeah uh, yeah there are some people family and friends have switched to the traditional wet shave using a safety razor so thanks very much for that question I really do appreciate it Okay, this next question comes from Christopher Charles. Hey Mark, here's a question I never thought I'd be asking. Is knurling overrated? I find I have no problem at all gripping and using my Vikings Blade Godfather razor, no matter how wet my hands or how much soap is on them. As we know, that's a plain chrome handle with no knurling, though it does have ridges. On the other hand, haha, I have real problems gripping my EJ, Edwin Jagger, DE89 with knurled handle, even when I use alum on my hand. Other things being equal, and since chrome is chrome except thickness and finish, I wonder if grippiness is more to do with handle design and length than knurling. Best, Chris. Hey, Chris, thanks for a very great, for a terrific, terrific question. Here's the Vikings Blade Godfather that he's referring to. Yeah, it has this nice, long, bulbous handle with these ridges right here. The first time I used it and reviewed it, I remarked that it just fit into the hand, fit in my hand so very, very nicely, and I got such a great grip from it. Uh, just because this bulbous area here just seemed to sit in the palm of my hand very nicely. And these ridges here just gave me a uh, nice grip. Uh, even going against the grain uh, pass, just holding it here, I seem to get a nice grip. So yeah, I think that length and, and, and thickness and that sort of thing do come into play, but I don't think knurling is overrated. When I came back to the traditional wet shave, uh, I found my late father's Gillette Super Speed from 1957, and uh, it has terrific knurling on it. And I would call this uh, a straight knurling pattern like this, and it had a little flare tip here. And uh, it really is a terrific, terrific razor. I didn't want to use it right away. I wanted to learn the process of the shave. So there are some things, some factors, some features that a razor uh, was going to need. Uh, a new razor that I was going to purchase and that was I wanted the, the handle to be longer I wanted it to be a little bit heavier I wanted the razor head to enclose the end tabs of the blade and I wanted it to have some substantial good knurling on it which is why I uh, went ahead and got the Vikings blade chieftain razor because it ticked all the boxes it enclosed the end tabs of the uh, of the blade it was heavier the handle was a little bit longer and it had this terrific, terrific knurling here, which did give me a great grip. So when you think about it, the length, the thickness of the handle, the diameter of the handle and the knurling all came into play to really give me a good, sure grip in learning the process. So I think all those factors come into play. I don't think knurling is, uh, is overrated at all. I think it's just part of the design. Uh, and uh, I like the different knurlings on the different handles and I think that's another another attraction to the traditional wet shave because there are so many different styles of knurling. Uh, my Edwin Jagger has these vertical these vertical lines right here and that really affords a good grip all the way around. These are straight almost like a, a, a tight piping and that gives me a very very good grip. Then you have some classic knurling like on this Parker variant adjustable razor all right and it has a little bit of a barber barber pole design just a little bit of a barber pole swirl can you see that there now i mention that because i've read that if the barber pole swirls one way 
in your right hand it's terrific but if you go to your left hand it slips a little bit so check your Edwin Jagger knurling on that handle and see if it has a little bit of a barber pole design are you left-handed that might be what's coming into play just uh, just something that I picked up over the years reading different posts online that uh, a barber pole design for left-handed users doesn't always work too well it's a little more slick in the hand now my process of doing the wet shave and assuring that I get a good grip is I have two hand towels a fresh one to clean my face and a day old one that I set aside to wipe off my hands after lathering in between rinses passes that sort of thing and this is how the process works I put the day old towel here I hang up the the fresh towel I go about my shave and after rinsing and in between shave passes I'm constantly drying off my hands so they're not overly wet or overly slick and I get a good grip of my razor regardless of which one I use then after my shave uh, I use the new towel to dry my face to clean my brush to clean my razor just as I described in the beginning of this video I use a day old towel to mop up everything and then I hang both of them up to dry the next day I take that day old towel which is now two days old and I throw that in the hamper because it's dry I take the previous towel which is now a day old towel I put that down to dry my hands and I get a fresh clean towel to uh, towel off my face and again clean my brush clean my razor that sort of thing and that's the process I use when I do the traditional wet shave does it make for a little bit of laundry at the end of the week y yes it does uh, and you know what uh, I'm, I have no problem with that it's my skin it's my face and I want to take care of myself some guys spend more time and money playing golf I don't play golf I do the traditional wet shave so I afford myself that little extra bit to take care of myself uh, because it's my skin it's my health you know why not okay hey thanks very very much for tuning in I really do appreciate it uh, please share please subscribe um, please like hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video uh, comment below let me know check out my blog georgetune.com slash blog for my comic strip George other cartoons other videos like this uh, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady where you'll find all the products I talk about and review on this channel on that page categorized and organized so you can find everything very very easily thanks very much for tuning in again I really appreciate it make it a great week